In today's video, we are going to be ranking self-improvement practices. Uh, this is a random tier list I found online. I did not create it, but I do want to kind of help to form a stronger bond between me and my viewers. So I think this would be a good thing. We're going to be ranking self-improvement self-improvement practices. You get to see my opinion, my view on these. I'm going to keep the introduction really short and sweet. And let's hop in right into this video. Okay, so the first one is... I'm assuming this is eating healthy. For, like, obviously, it's going to be Giga Chad tier. Obviously, Giga Chad tier. Eating healthy is absolutely essential. It's a first self-improvement practice. I would argue the original self-improvement, the bare bones, first thing you should do is start to control what you eat. Because if you control what you eat, it's going to affect literally every other practice you partake in. Every other one of these is going to be affected by you choosing to eat healthy. First thing you should do, eat healthy. Next thing we have is, what is this, working out? Working out, definitely also super important. I mean, like, you have to work out if you want to get some of the most important things in life. Also going to affect everything else. If you have a good physique, if you are strong, if you're in peak physical shape, it's going to help you if your business, you're going to feel better. People are going to respect you. You're going to get girls, literally every other aspects affected by you having a good physique. So work on that physique. Do not cheat yourself. Don't think like no one cares about my physique. Everyone's whatever excuse. Your physique matters. Stop fucking around. Start ripping out push-ups. Next one. Is this... I'm assuming it's cold showers. They're not going to put shower. I think everyone takes a shower. Cold showers are, I don't, I don't really value cold showers. I think cold showers, they do not hold as much benefits as I think an ice bath. Because the main benefits of an ice bath, they, they reduce your muscle soreness. They have all the things. I think the only two comparisons we could draw between ice baths and cold showers is the discipline aspect because it's not fun to take a cold shower or do this but my problem with doing this thing for discipline taking a cold shower just to build discipline apparently is you could just replace it with any other thing that's going to build discipline you get the same outcome without the thing you could literally run and you'd get a better result you get a better body and a stronger mind whereas taking a cold shower it just works your mind basically so for that reason i am opposed to cold showers this one's weed i'm allowed to rank weed i'm allowed to give my opinion on weed on a youtube channel this one is sleep i'm assuming obviously you have to get good sleep that's like essential good sleep we spend one third of our life sleeping so if you're gonna spend that much of your life doing something you might as well do it correctly am i right like if i'm gonna spend a certain amount of my time if i'm gonna like spend my entire life i might as well get that shit down to a fucking down to a what is it called i might as well get that shit down to a fucking science if i'm gonna spend my entire most of my life sleeping Sleep, it affects so many other things. People think it just affects, like, how much energy I have. Like, I'm going to be sleepy, I'm going to be tired. No, it affects your health and every aspect of your health. You, if you're going to affect the world and have any influence, it's going to be through using your brain and your body. And sleep helps restore those things. It helps heal your body. You need fucking sleep. Do not try to... <laughs> be those people thinking they can get I can get four hours of sleep and work perfectly fine there's like maybe there's like no chance of you doing that it's you have a greater chance of like getting struck by lightning than being one of the people who can go like four hours you're not one of those people stop bullshitting yourself get your fucking eight hours maybe like six to eight hours is good seven would I think of Hamza as a self-improvement YouTuber? I think this is what the question's asking. My opinions on Hamza, I think he's very good. He's he's a good influence on young men, I think. He he influenced me. 
So like, Hamza, yeah, there's wild opinions on him. Obviously, he's going to be controversial. Some people are going to like him. Other viewers might hate him. But I assume my audience is in agreement that Hamza is pretty good. Like, he helps young men. He helps drag them out of being degenerates and towards more productive things in life. There's nothing wrong with Hamza. He's not trying to hurt anybody. If, you, if he's not hurting you, he's making you better. What's it? Sunlight first thing in the morning? You know what I have to say. I'm a huge Andrew Huberman fan. Sunlight first thing in the morning is absolutely essential. If you're not getting sunlight, then what the fuck are you doing? You need sunlight first thing in the morning. You need as much sunlight as you can. It affects every aspect of you as well. Sunlight affects your mood. It affects how alert you are, how awake. And that's literally everything. So if you want to be happy, get sunlight in your eyes. And how I know this is whenever it's like raining, whenever it's raining, it's dark out, and I'm inside all day, I realize my mood is pretty shit. But when it's a bright sunny day, you know, the birds are chirping. I can go outside and it's nice and warm and sunny. That's normally when I have a happy day. I'm in a good mood. The sun, it does something for our brains and it makes you feel better. It wakes you up and you're more alert. Sunlight is essential. Is this mewing? Mewing is good. If you want to have a good jawline, sure you can mew. Mewing's like, whatever. This alcohol, I've no... I can't talk about alcohol. Because I'll drink I'm like a child. <laughs> Nicotine? Why do I have to do this stuff? No fab? I don't know. I might change my opinion. What NoFap is, it's a community of people who just refuse to fap, as you would expect. And my opinion on NoFap, I think it's, I think NoFap is BS. Like, it's natural to fap. And it's like, gonna fuck you up. It's completely natural. I'm pretty sure. So, I have nothing wrong with it. I think porn's bad, but it's completely natural. And as long as you're not spending, like, going, like, three rounds, and you're actually, like, not wasting your life, nothing wrong with it. This one, what are we ranking? This is quality social connection. This is being social. Oh, sorry. This is absolutely essential for you to have. You need quality social connection. One of the things Andrew Huberman was talking about, th there's a no replacement for like quality social connection. Something my mom sent me on Instagram was, she sent me like some reel. <laughs> she likes doing that. But she sent me this reel and it said, the number one determinant of a long life is so social connection, having meaningful quality social connection. If you think of the people who are like depressed and lonely and don't live long lives, these are the people who spend their time indoors and don't really are f lonely people. Lonely people die. If you want to die, the best way to do it is to cut out all your friends, never hang out with another person. That's it's lay a punishment. People put you in solitary confinement as a punishment. Being away from friends and having no social connection is a punishment that in prison. So think of that. You need to get as much quality social connection. You need to have good friends, people who bring you up. Have the top five people have be around people that are going to challenge you and help you to become a better person. Friends are absolutely essential. I cannot stress it enough. Get good friends. That are going to bring you up. If then someone's not bringing you up, they're dragging you down. So determine who those people are and make the necessary changes to your friend group. This social media, quitting social media. So there's like crossed out social media. Do I think? Well, social media is bad, but it's hard to like quit because. Social media, you should not spend your time consuming other people's content. 
the one thing I would say is about these social media platforms is mindless content consumption. Is when you're not control, when you're not consciously, consciously controlling what you do on your phone. People will instinctively go on their phone and scroll. If you're not scrolling consciously, doing it because you're actively seeking out information for something, like having a problem and you're like, what do I do? And you look up a solution. That's how you're supposed to use these apps like YouTube. The way you're not supposed to use them is mindlessly consuming stuff, scrolling through your For You page, thinking you're going to find something good because... It's meant to be addictive. They hire psychologists to replicate casino slot machines. So every time you scroll on your phone, it's the equivalent of pulling that lever, expecting a dopamine hit, freaking dopamine hit, dopamine hit, expecting you to strike something good, hit like a jackpot, and find something worthy of sending to your friends. That's all these apps are designed for. They're meant to drag your attention. They're designed to get as much of your attention as possible, and they're really good at it. If you can use these effectively and not let them, which is harder, I'd say. It's pretty hard to be in control of what you do on these apps. But if you can, it can actually be beneficial, in my opinion. And posting stuff, of course, you can build an audience like me, posting your own content on social media and building connections being social, which as we said is very helpful, having meaningful, meaningful social connection. So it's both good and bad, but don't, the ma <laughs> you're going to be controlled by the algorithms, you're going to waste all your life and your time if you don't use these apps correctly. Use social media correctly, do not fall into this trap. Now reading, I want to say I've changed my opinion on reading, I think reading is essential. <laughs> and. I used to say, like, you can't learn through reading. You have to go experience pain and do stuff in the real world, which is true. But reading is very good for getting information because, you know, it gives you the steps of what how you can take action in the real world. Taking action, of course, is how things get done, how you improve your life. But reading a book is like reading a manual on how to what to take action on. Like, it's giving you steps, it's giving you input so you can become a more articulate person. It's training you to think, it's building your brain up and your library of knowledge. I have nothing against reading anymore. I think it's valuable. Read as much as you can, consume as much knowledge as you can, and make sure you're taking action on it and not consuming information for fun, like how you do on social media. Mindful content consumption, not mindless. If that makes sense to you guys. I think running is good. I like running. Running is good. It's a good form of cardio. I would... I think I like running. I run with my mom every now and then. Uh, it helps build up your strength. Super natural exercise. Running A tier. Meditation. Meditation is good, but like... I don't know. I've tried meditating before and I haven't really seen too much benefit. I feel like meditation <sighs> this is gonna be controversial, which is good. <laughs> I think meditation is a waste of time, in my opinion. The world's moving fast and if you're gonna have if you have enough time to waste meditating, then you're obviously not working hard enough, I guess. I just Maybe my opinion can change. Maybe I can try meditation and I'll change my thoughts. But for now, I think meditation is a waste of time. You spend 10 minutes doing nothing. Like, I don't know. B tier. This one's journaling. What do I think of journaling? I value journaling. I think it can be useful for... Just discovering who you are, helping you, helping you map out your thoughts and journaling, it really helps clear up your thinking, it helps people to just organize their thoughts, think their way through to solutions. I journal every now and then. I started video journaling 
which is where I'd r I'll record myself speaking instead of just writing it down, which hel also helps me with my talking and communication skills because it's feedback that I can get to improve myself. Definitely A tier. Gratitude. Gratitude is good. I like gratitude. I think gratitude can... When you think... The only thing I know about... The only thing I really know about gratitude is when you think of depression... Gratitude is like the opposite of depression. It's being grateful for stuff. Depression is ungrateful. You like all moody and shit. I think gratitude is the opposite of depression. So if you can practice gratitude, it's going to make you happier for the things you have and help to reduce the effects of hedonic adaptation, which makes you get used to stuff, used to how good your life is. And you get to like compare. I don't know what this is, Skip. Was it setting clear goals? Obviously, you have to have goals in order to succeed in life. But I haven't... <laughs> yeah, goals. So, of course, you have to have goals. I have goals. But I don't really write them out too much. Maybe I should. <laughs> like, I have a goal of a 1,000 subscribers on this channel. I have, I have blurry goals, I guess. I don't really have direct goals that I check off on my wall. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I don't have much to say about goals. Oh, this one is intermittent fasting. I like it. I think it's pretty good. I will say I am a hypocrite. <laughs> I talk about I talk about intermittent fasting, yet I don't do it. And this is for the reason that I'm like 16 years old. I'm doing wrestling, I'm doing a bunch of physical activity, I'm moving all day, and I burn calories like fucking that, so I have to eat all day. If I try to like eat only at dinner, I'm gonna be dead, <laughs> I'm gonna have no muscle, so I'm one of those people who has to eat a ton, I have to have, eat a bunch every day, and even then it's hard for me to put on weight. I'm not one of those people who likes eating, <laughs> I like to just work, and I don't care about eating. So intermittent fasting does not work for me. I get tired and I can't really control that because I have to eat. And if I try to eat a ton at once, it just doesn't work. This one is stretching. Of course you have to stretch, bro. Of course you have to stretch. Stretching, I don't know. Can you still, you can probably still become a successful person without having to stretch. Is stretch really important to self-improvement? Like you could be some... It doesn't matter. If you can get the same result without the thing, then the thing isn't needed. There's probably people who have become successful and they're like... They're not fit. <laughs> they're not flexible. Like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. You can't... Bill Gates. You can't tell me these people... Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. You can't tell me these guys are flexible. In any fashion but they're still successful so do you does you do you have to be do you have to be flexible to be successful maybe we should divide define what success is to you guys you think it's just a bunch of money I don't know anyways I'll leave stretching at B tier I don't know what this is smiley face just happy water well obviously Obviously, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you can live without water. <laughs> obviously, that's a stupid thing. You can't live without water. Obviously, it's Giga Chad's here. Water is going to affect every other aspect of your self improvement journey. So, of course, water is important. You can't skip out on that shit. Um, quitting video games. <sighs> video games can be good, they also can be bad. If you use them as you're supposed to as a game and use them to build social connection, as we said, was super important. High quality social connection is super important. So if you can use video games for that, that's no problem. But people who waste like 12 hours a day playing the games all alone, do not play. If you're going to play video games, at least play with your friends. Do not be like me and grind alone. And make sure you're not doing it 
all day. Make sure video games are not your life. They're supposed to be a game that you do just for fun when you want to waste time. You have a strong life ahead of you. You can be anyone you want to. There's a lot of potential for you. Do not waste it on video games. Okay? This is love. I cannot rate love. What is that? Is that sunlight? Supplements? Okay. This one's getting up early. F tier. You know why I say getting up early doesn't matter? Because you don't need to get up early to be successful. That's just because like Mike Tyson, whatever, wakes up at four o'clock doesn't mean you have to. There's if we were to come up with a millionaire routine, it would have to be something that every millionaire does. And there's millionaires who don't wake up early. A lot of them get jet lag and wake up at like nine or whatever. It doesn't matter what time you wake up. Just complete the same amount of work. You know, I have to wake up early, of course, because I have school, but waking up early does not matter. <laughs> that was my ranking of self-improvement traits or habits or whatever. Hope you like the picks. If you have any ones that you're like stuck up on, if you disagree with any of my opinions, just let me know and I will talk to you and debate you on that.